What's up guys? So I'm going to show you how to data log your car today. This is going to be using an SCT device on a laptop. It's uh, pretty dang easy. Um, you're just going to follow the information that we sent you in the email that we sent you for your tune, right? So there's like a list of like 10 or 15 steps, I don't remember. But it includes the link to everything you need to download, etc, etc. So the first program you need to download is this one right here. Live link, okay? Once you've downloaded it, you're just gonna open it up. It was actually kinda hard to film and watch. Um, first thing we're gonna do is actually, we're gonna hit load config, cause that's what I like to do. And then you're gonna just click on whatever your car is. We will have sent you this file. That is the C4 file. You're gonna have to go to like your downloads folder, wherever you download it. I'm doing a 2015 Mustang, so I'm gonna pick the 2011 to 17 Coyote. Okay. And then, I have it up. This is how it'll pop up for you. Sorry, I'm uh, loading a tune right now too, so I gotta mess with that. But um, what I like to do is I like to hit the layout and put the gauges like this. And you can set it up differently. I have a saved layout that I use. So, like that. Then, you're just gonna hit the COM button. Okay, so now I got the tune loaded, and I'm gonna make sure to hit the on button so that the car is not cranked up, but we're in on mode. So then I'm gonna hit the COM table, and we're gonna check communication. Sometimes this takes a while, sometimes it's fast. We'll see how long this one takes. Now, I do have to have both the SCT connected to the top, which goes to the OBD2 port, and then out the bottom, which connects to the laptop via the, SC, uh, the USB cable. So there we go, gave us an answer. And yes, it says strategy code not found, that's because our tunes from Auto Mafia are locked. So then you're just gonna hit view, take us back to this screen, which is where we wanna be, and then you can just hit the start data logging button. Now that's what actually starts the data log. It is going to pop this up. Now this is popping up because we have a manual. So I'm just going to hit OK. Because it really doesn't matter. We don't need to see that stuff. If I can find where my mouse is. Oh, over there. There we are. Alright, hit OK. So now the car is technically logging. It is uh, telling us different... Um, parameters and what they're running so like engine coolant air intake temp blah 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 now what we like to see or what you should really look at you can look at your rpm engines off so there's not going to be any um, and then we look at the air fuel ratios and we look at the both long term and short term sensors and I'm going to look at both of them because I want to see if both of his O2 sensors are reading. Now you don't have to do this because it's already monitoring all those things. This just lets you see it a lot easier. And then the last one we're going to do is probably the NOx sensor. There we go. So since I don't really know what fuel is in this, I like, I'm always going to run a NOx sensor and uh, see what she's doing. So now I can push the clutch in, which I just did, and hit the button again to start her up. So you see it started up, RPMs are reading, and, but we don't have any AFRs yet. It will take it just a minute, and once it gets warm enough basically, it should read both banks on the O2 sensor. If you let it idle for the three minutes that we asked for, a three minute idle log, and your O2 sensor still shows zero, they're either not plugged in or they're not working. So replace them or at least make sure they're plugged in. We do keep them in stock for Coyotes and the 3.7s most of the time. As we can tell, this car is idling well. It cranked up and it's idling very nicely. So here we can see as the car warms up, it's gonna drop the RPMs. We have it set for about 800 to 825. And our measured AFR should be right around one. And our short term should be right around one. So we know that the tune is good because our short terms and our AFR are right around one at idle, so we know we have most of our data correct. Now, the big thing that I see a lot, either your O2 sensors aren't reading, or they're reading like 
1.3, 1.4. That means they're 30% off from where they should be because these are a percentage. If it's that far off, guys, you either told us the wrong information or you have a leak. Period, dot, end of story. That's what it is. Now, if you're doing a boosted car, we will dial it in slowly so that'll get closer and closer to 1 ohm. So we usually ask for a three minute idle log and then after that, I typically ask for a third gear um, watt hit. So with this car, I know my tune for these modifications is on the money. I know what my settings all need to be. So I can see looking at my measured AFR and my short term fuel trims and the RPM and just listening to how the car's running. It's running smooth, we're fine. So I can give it a rev. So I can see that everything moved, it revs smooth. I don't have a burble or anything on it yet. This is just a normal, normal tune. But everything moves in your log as you do it. So now you're gonna want to drive to a safe space, um, <laughs> a safe space, a safe spot where you're not gonna get pulled over, um, where there's not traffic, preferably. Be safe, guys, please. We've had a couple guys wreck recently doing logs on boosted cars, um, losing control, and we don't want you to get hurt, so be careful. Um, don't do it in the rain or the snow or the ice or anything like that. Make sure you got good tires. But you're just going to go ahead and get to a point where you can do that. So I'm going to simulate this on the dyno. This car really does not like to go into first. There we go. So we're going to go ahead and start driving here. All righty. We're going to rev her up. Service tire kit, okay. Get her in a second. Third. So now guys, we're in third. I like to see a 2500 RPM to redline typically. Now, personally, when I'm dyno tuning, I watch the laptop. You don't need to see the laptop because you don't really know what any of this is. So, give it to the passenger. They can look at it. The main thing that I'm going to tell you to look at is your knock sensor. If knock sensor goes above like one or two, get out of the throttle and send us the log. So, for me, I need to hold a couple more things. So, I'm going to put this down. But we're going to go ahead and do a fourth gear, um, full throttle pull all the way through the RPMs so that I can look at the look. Alrighty. Alright guys, so that was our full throttle pull in fourth gear. So now we can go ahead and we can stop our log. Okay, and we can stop it. And then you're going to hit this button right here, save it, and you're going to hit save all. It's going to pop up, and then you're just going to save it for whatever you want to save it as, and then you're going to email it to us. It's that simple, nice and easy. You do have to save it as a CSV file, um, and it will save that right at the bottom in the save as type. I'll show you here in a second. So right there, you guys can see, you're going to name it as, right, we'll do third gear watt. Oh, one okay and you see we have selected as a CSV file you want it to be CSV you save it as anything else I can't read it so there you guys go pretty simple we did our watt hit it looked good I'm gonna make my corrections and send back a new tune to the customer except I'm in the car so I'm just gonna adjust it load it again do another log and that's all it takes. So thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions, just make sure to comment below or email us at support at automafiaracing.com or tuner at automafiaracing.com for all your tuning needs, all your parts needs. We'll get you guys done. I'm going to finish this car up. We're going to make another video on dyno tuning this car, so check that out. And I'll give you guys the sneak peek. That first hit, we made 442 horsepower. We'll see you later.